Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode four, the fourth and final episode of the video series where we're talking about printing in Lightroom. Now, in the last episode, I covered much of the print module in Lightroom. We're going to finish it up today, and really, the only part I really left out was this part, print job. And this is the most complicated, I guess, complex part, in my opinion, of the print module and the most critical part for you to get great images when you print them. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go through this and then at the end we're going to talk about ICC profiles and show you how to download them and install them and we're going to talk a little bit about color spaces uh, and answer some questions I've already received regarding printing in Lightroom. All right, the first thing under print job that you'll see is print to and you have two choices printer or JPEG file. I don't really know of anyone that uses the print module to print to a JPEG file. Normally you'd use export function of Lightroom to print, you know, to create a JPEG file. If you want to do that, you could try. You could print it to a JPEG file if you so choose. Um, but as I mentioned, it's a lot easier and more convenient to use the export um, function in my opinion. So normally we're going to print to a printer. Draft mode printing means we're going to ignore all this color management stuff and we're just going to send a, the basically the raw image to a printer to be printed. You might want to do that if you want to check the margins and make sure your image is centered and make sure that the printer is working. So you'd use cheap paper and just send the image out um, you know to the to the cheap paper, make sure all your inks are working, stuff like that. So you might want to use that. And of course it's going to uh, print very quickly. Normally of course, we want a good print. We're not going to um, check there. Now, print resolution. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of back and forth. And I, I got to say, there probably isn't any right way to regard and, and work with print resolution. Everyone has their opinion. So I'm going to try to give you as much information as I can so you could form your opinion on how to utilize print resolution uh, that suits you, I'm going to tell you how I do it too. Print resolution has to do with the pixels, pixels per inch. Now, if you look at this specific image here, you can see it's roughly a 13 by 19 and it's 379 pixels per inch. Now, if for some reason I decide to use an 8 by 10, okay, just for that, you could see that the pixels per inch went up drastically, 632 pixels per inch. Now, that makes sense, right? A smaller image is going to have a, the, the pixels will be closer together and will be uh, denser uh, to each other. So um, that makes sense. Now, I messed everything up when I did that. So just bear with me one second. We'll just bring all this back out. because we wanted to print that borderless print, as you recall. Okay, we're back to where we were. So we're back at this uh, 13 by 19 at 379 pixels per inch. Personally, what I've found in my tinkerings with printing, if the pixels per inch drop too low, you will get a lousy print. Well, what's too low? Well, most people consider below 240 pixels per inch to be too low for any given size. So that's why we have this checkbox here. We could check it here and it says 240 pixels per inch. Now you could see up here it disappeared because this image was bigger or had a higher density than 240 pixels per inch. By checking this box, it's now going to be downsized to 240 pixels per inch. There are a lot of photographers I know that always check that box, no matter what. They're going to downsize their more dense images to 240 pixels per inch, and their prints look fine. You might want to do that. It just, you know, automatically check the box and not worry about it. Personally, I don't. I figured, why waste these pixels? <laughs> so I will print it at 379 pixels per inch in this case. Now, if we look at this image, going to the 13 by 19 inch paper, you could see it's 172 pixels per inch. That's because it was a crop sensor camera to begin with, so it has less pixels than the full sensor camera I used on this image. 
Not only that, I ended up cropping the image in a little bit. I wanted to get the bird over more towards the rule of thirds, so it got cropped a little bit. So I cropped out some pixels. That's why a lot of times we try to tell you, capture it in camera, you don't want to do much cropping, especially if you're going to print, because you're cropping out pixels. It has been my experience that if an image is below 180 pixels, not 240 for me, this is my experience, below 180, the print usually doesn't look that great. So I'll try checking there. Now what will happen is because this image was below 240, it's going to um, upscale the pixels. So it's going to interpolate. It's going to create pixels. It's going to fit pixels in that weren't there and get it to 240 pixels per inch. Well, it's been, again, my experience that sometimes that works great and the image will look beautiful, but sometimes it looks horrible and it and doesn't print well. So this print resolution is something you're going to have to resolve on your own. Um, again, personally, if, it, if, mine is a, if my image is a, over 240 pixels per inch, like Archie is here, that one's just over 240 pixels per inch. That was on a crop sensor camera. And this one is much over, way over 240 pixels per inch. I just print it as is. I do not check that checkbox. If I'm above, as a matter of fact, 180 pixels per inch, I won't check that checkbox. And I usually, almost always, get a great print. If I'm below 180 and I really want to print it, I'll try it with and without the box checked. If, for instance, this image at 13 by 19, no matter what, with that box check, without that box check, let's say I print it and it looks horrible, the only choice I have is to print a smaller resolution because as I showed you when we printed the 8 by 10, the pixels per inch go up. So I'm going to have to maybe make this 11 by 14 or something like that. So we get the print resolution of the pixels per inch, I should say, above 180. That's my guideline. So that's print resolution and something you'll have to work out how it works for you. And I would imagine that every printer might be a little different. For me, working with these Canon and Epson printers that I got from B&H uh, Photo, 180 seems to be a good number, above 180. Maybe on a different printer it might be different. Maybe it's 200 or maybe it's 240. All right, so you're going to have to experiment with that. Now, print sharpening couple different ideas here too. Generally speaking, a lot of people feel that if you're using more of a, a cotton rag paper, a, an art paper, a canvas paper, something that is um, more artsy, for lack of a better term, you want to add more sharpening to it than a photo paper. Photo paper, you know, is usually going to be very crisp, and so you don't need as much sharpening. I agree with that generally. The other point is that the smaller the print, this is counterintuitive maybe, the smaller the print needs more sharpening. The reason being is let's say you print a 4x6. You're not going to hang a 4x6 on the wall all by itself and someone's not going to look at it from 10 feet away. They're going to hold the 4x6 in their hand and they're going to hold it 12 inches away from their nose. So it is thought that the smaller prints need a little more sharpening. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that personally, but that would be something that you might want to experiment with also. Now, when it comes down to it, we have three choices here. We have low, standard, and high. Typically, I use standard almost all the time and rarely ever use high, and I don't think I've ever used low. Um, I don't often print to the artsy velvet papers and stuff like that, but if I did, I would put it on high, so I would do that. Now, uh, again, uh, it's really up to you. I know Scott Kelby. I saw a seminar with him a long time ago, and he puts it on high for everything. Even if he's printing to a photo paper, he puts it on high. So there really is no um, right or wrong answer. Definitely do some print sharpening, though. So definitely check it. There really, as I mentioned, there's three types of sharpening in the photo process. There's Input sharpening, that's like what you do in Lightroom, uh, you know, just with the uh, detail panel. 
There's selective sharpening. That's like if you're going to, let's say you have a model and you want to sharpen the model's eyes, but you want to soften their skin. So it's selective sharpening. And then there's output sharpening. And that's what this is. And it is very important. And some people use a third-party program to sharpen. They use, you know, uh, On One or, or they use uh, something from Topaz to sharpen. Then in that case, they may not sharpen here. I strongly suggest, though, that if you're not using a third-party uh, sharpening software plugin, to definitely sharpen and use at least standard, is my opinion. Next, we have the media type, though. We have glossy and matte. Again, that's pretty straightforward. If you have glossy paper, semi-gloss, luster paper, you're having it on glossy. If it's one of those art papers, the Velvet Fine Art, or just even a matte photo paper, you're going to have it on the matte. And that will apply the sharpening differently uh, to the image. Now, 16-bit output for a bazillion years, only Apple computers could print 16-bit. Some of the newer Windows machines with the newer operating systems, from what I understand, could print 16-bit. If this is active, like it is on mine, Definitely check that. That's going to generate, they'll theoretically give you a better print. Um, I've seen tests where people can't tell the difference between 8 bit and 16 bit output. So it doesn't hurt to check it. If your computer and operating system aren't capable of 16 bit output, likely this will be grayed out and you will not be able to check it. All right. So if it's available to check, definitely check it. All right. Color management. Now, this is where we get into the profiles, and we're controlling the, um, the, the image. We're controlling the print. We don't want the printer to dictate how it's printed. We're going to tell the printer how to print it. And this is where we use those ICC profiles. And I talked about this in Episode 2 when we talked about soft proofing. And again, we have uh, these uh, six different um, ICC profiles. Uh, that I use, and we're gonna. We decided earlier we're gonna print this to the Epson P600 using exhibition fiber paper. That ICC profile is a file that's now on my computer that um, contains all the information that my printer needs to be set at to print properly to that type of paper. So it's gonna have the the right uh, amount of platen gap and the paper thickness and uh, how the actual droplets are going to be applied to the paper. All of that is going to be controlled uh, by this, the, is going to be dictated, it's going to be in this ICC file, which is going to be uh, sent to the printer and tell the printer basically what to do. And we're going to talk about how to load ICC profiles more in a minute. Now, uh, I'm not going to go much more into it there. I did cover that in episode two, so I don't want to like overlap too much on how to pick an ICC profile, go to other, and find your ICC profile here. Um, watch episode two for that, and that's where I talk about that. Now, the intent, I'll just talk about this again. This is how the printer handles um, saturated colors that are out of gamut. Um, the example I used in episode two is you have a, a dancer or a, or a model, and she has a purple dress, and it's saturated purple. Your printer's ink set, though, cannot print that exact shade of saturated purple. It's not capable of doing it. Well, how does the printer handle it? If you use perceptual intent, what it will do is it just lowers the saturation of that purple until it can print it. Relative intent means it will shift the hue of that purple to a saturated purple that it's able to print. Okay, the downside is on perceptual is that your saturated color is not no longer saturated. The downside of relative is there could be a lot of nuances of saturated purple in contained in that dress. I mentioned like the hem might be one saturated purple and the other, and let's say a ridge or a highlight on the purple dress might be another kind of saturated purple. And the printer will shift everything to one purple that it's able to print saturated, you'll possibly lose all that detail, those those that fine detail. So as I kind of overstated, the dress might become a purple blob. 
So that's the downside of relative. Generally speaking, it is recommended that 90% um, of the images that you're going to use perceptual. So check that out. A lot of times um, when you get an ICC profile for a specific paper and printer, uh, in the ICC profile often, not always, but, but sometimes, it will tell you what intent it recommends you use. So that's to take that into, into consideration as well. Okay, now print adjustment. This is probably the most confusing thing I get emails from. If you check this box and, and activate print adjustment and you take brightness and you move it around, you can see nothing's happening over here. Well, the idea here is, let's say you print your image and you're looking at it and it's too dark. Well, what you could do is you could activate this by checking the checkbox and you could take this brightness slider and push it up. Well, how much do you push it? Well, you just push it up and do another print. <laughs> and if you push it too far, bring it down and do another print. In contrast, too, if it doesn't look like it has enough contrast, turn up contrast. Well, how much? Well, I'll push it up and do a print. It's the goofiest, stupidest adjustment I've ever seen in my life, if you ask me. But who am I to judge? Now, with that said, why would you even have to do that? Well, if your screen isn't calibrated properly, likely your prints are going to be dark. And I say that because with these modern uh you know, LCD displays and, and LED lights and all this other, you know, technical mumbo jumbo on the screens we use today, we tend to have them super bright. And you're looking at your image on the screen that is backlit with light flying into your face. Your print is reflecting light back to you. So we got these two different types of light. And if you're not calibrating your your uh, display and you're not using a calibration tool such as the spider 5 pro which i demoed in episode one that has an ambient light sensor on it and you leave it plugged into your computer so it's constantly monitoring the light and periodically adjusting the brightness and contrast to your screen to match the ambient room then chances are you're not going to print your image with the correct brightness or contrast level. Personally, using the Spider 5 Pro, I've not had an issue printing an, an image that became printed too dark or too light. Rarely too light. It's almost always too dark. It's because we generally will want our screens to be bright. And one of the things I hear most, comments I hear most from people that just calibrated their screen is, wow, the screen's awful dark. <laughs> Well, that's because of the reason I mentioned it's backlit, and we tend to keep it very bright. So, my number one recommendation to you is you get a Spider 5 Pro. All this will be linked below. And calibrate your screen. Leave it plugged in and let it um, ambient or measure the ambient light uh, in, in the uh, room constantly and periodically update. Uh, the brightness and contrast of your screen. Beyond that is my recommendation is that if you have to check this box and use it, is that you're go in something like just don't like move it up like up like try to be organized about it. Okay, how dark is your image? Does it look real real dark? All right, let's move this up to plus 50 because we could go up to plus 100. So let's go split it in half and go to plus 50. Something like that. You could also just double it in or type it in right there if you want. Does the contrast look all right? A lot of times if you bring brightness up, you're going to lose a little contrast. Do you want to do that now or maybe do another test print? Okay, it's a little too bright. So we're going to bring it down to 30, 30, let's say, or 29. And it lacked a little contrast, so I'm going to turn contrast up. So you're going to have to weasel, you know, go back and forth in these. Generally speaking, I think what you'll find, and what I've encountered from other people that need to check this, usually once they set this once, it usually will work quite well for a while, meaning that session, maybe the next day, a couple days, until someday they're processing an image and they're in a totally dark room, whereas before they were in a very bright room or vice versa. So still, my recommendation is get a Spider 5 Pro. 
and uh, adjust your screen and leave the ambient light monitoring on. Now, the ambient light monitoring, uh, it works well for me. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's totally foolproof. There still might be a situation with a certain image and a certain lighting condition in the room you're in where it might still print a little dark or a little light. But um, generally, for me, that I found, I've yet to have to ever check this box because I'm using the Spider 5 Pro. All right. Now, somebody messaged me or emailed me or wrote on, um, on uh, YouTube or something that Windows machines don't have this print settings box. And you remember in yesterday's episode, I did page setup first where we picked the type of printer we're using and the size paper we're using. And then I went to print settings so I could pick the printer we're using. And in this case, then we, oops, don't go there. We want to go here. We went to the printer settings and we did some printer settings down here. Well, if that is so that Windows computers, Lightroom on Windows computers doesn't have this button, do not fear, because once you are done with this um, this dialog of print job, you go right here to printer next, and it's the same button as over here. So, um, so we're good to go. We just have to pick the printer we're using. We have to pick the layout, the printer settings, and remember I mentioned this is different because this is the actual driver for the Epson P600. So it's going to be different for your printer if you have a different model. It's also going to look considerably different if you're using a Windows computer and you have even if you have the exact same Epson printer. Your Windows driver is going to be different. It's just I don't know why they do that. So we, remember we have the exhibition fiber paper. We have it set there as well as there for the ICC profile and um, it automatically picked the Superfine 1440 DPI and typically what I do is I just hit print right now from here. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's what we do. So that's really the print module in a nutshell. So I just want to talk a little bit more about ICC profiles and color space. Now, as you know, there's like generally three color spaces that are used in Lightroom and Photoshop, and um, that's um, Adobe RGB. Pro Photo RGB or Pro Photo, I think it's called, and uh, sRGB. Generally speaking, or specifically speaking, I should say, uh, Pro Photo is kind of akin to like a Crayola box of 64 crayons, and Adobe uh, Photo, Adobe RGB is kind of like 32 crayons, and sRGB might be like eight crayons. Now the ratios are totally wrong, but that gives you an idea that the Pro Photo has a near infinite, infinite number of colors available to it. The um, Adobe RGB has a lot, <laughs> and the sRGB has less. Typically, when we're working in Windows, or I'm sorry, working in Lightroom and or Photoshop or another program similar to any of those, we want all the colors available to us, so it is recommended we use Pro Photo all the way through. But then when we're going to send it to a file, maybe an export, and we're going to look at it on our computer monitor, a computer monitor can't uh, display the colors much more than sRGB. So we export usually as sRGB for a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever we're going to look at on a computer screen. But if you're printing, you still want all those avail colors available for you. So keep your images in um, Pro Photo. And then when you go to print, the ICC profile will tell the printer how to print to a certain type of paper. Printer ink sets are capable of a certain gamut of colors. And that will change depending on what type of paper you're using. Generally speaking, photo papers have a larger, larger uh, gamut than do like a fine art paper. And we talked about this in episode two again, so I don't want to overlap too much. But when you're printing, you don't really want to worry too much about uh, color spaces, sRGB, Profoto. You just want to leave everything in Profoto. So you have all the colors available to you a near infinite, infinite, infinite number of colors. 
I don't know why I can't say infinite all of a sudden. So you have this near infinite number of colors available to you. And hopefully your ink set with the paper could produce a bunch of those. If you limit yourself to, R, let's say, sRGB, it is possible that your ink set and paper combination it could print a lot more colors than you're given a credit for. So you're going to send an R, sRGB image to it, and you're limiting the number of colors that are probably would have been available to be printed if you used a color space of ProPhoto RGB. So general consensus, leave everything in ProPhoto RGB. If you're going to export to a JPEG, export to sRGB. Uh, if you're using the book module, they recommend sRGB. All right, so you know, just use sRGB for books if you're getting books uh, made through the book module. Uh, other than that, though, that though, you're always going to want to leave it in ProPhoto RGB. All right. So that's my talk in color spaces. Now we're going to talk about ICC profiles, and we're going to go to Hanamiul. Now Hanamiul, um, my favorite paper in the whole wide world is Hanamiul Photorag Burita. I love the paper, and I tell you the truth, I haven't really tried too many of their other papers because I got this and I just love it. So I use that quite often, but if you have a third-party manufacturer, or even if you have an Epson printer and you want to find more Epson ICC profiles, you go to Epson website, search for ICC profiles. You have a Canon, search for ICC. Same thing, uh, HP. Go to HP, search for ICC profiles. Third-party manufacturers like Hanamule, uh go to their website. This is their home page, and you can see right here ICC profiles. They don't make it difficult for you to find it. And um, you can see here it's talking about the ICC profiles, and it gives you... Um, the um, information you need here about how to install ICC profiles and stuff like that. So we're going to go to the Download Center. And I'm just going to show you this real quick so you could see, at least on Hanamiel, how it's done. And you drill down. We had this Epson printer, and it's going to come up with, we want the uh, Sure Colors P600. And then what kind of, of uh, paper group? So we're going to go with uh, Matte Fine Art. And then these are the papers right here. So let's just say I want this PhotoRag Ultra Smooth. All right, so I'll click on that. And what it will do is it puts it in a download list right here. And I could just keep clicking and adding to it. But to keep it simple, we're going to leave it just like this. And because to do a fast download. So we have the handling instructions and the actual ICC profile. We're going to download it. And you can see it downloaded right here. And it's downloaded. So let's go to that. There's my downloads. There it is right there. It's zipped. ICC profile Hanamiel.zip. We'll click on that. And you can see there it is. We're going to double click and open it. Now we have instructions in four different languages. And remember, these are the PDF instructions that I told you are rather important that you should read. Now, remember I told you, it, it, it gives you the information you need, the media velvet fine art paper. That is what you would put – oops, don't want that printer. That printer. Right here, we want velvet fine art paper. So you just find it. There it is right there. So that is what you put there, and we don't want that. Sorry. And we want a quality of 1440 DPI, and so that is right there. So that is what you would put into those settings, and they're they're uh, as I mentioned, they're written here in the profile. And it shows you some specific instructions for Photoshop, uh, but we're not using Photoshop, obviously. So that is, you know, downloading the profile. Now, once you download the profile, to install the profile, let's just pull it off of here. Um, what we would do is you just go to your hard drive if you have a, no, you know what, if you have, um, I should say, if you have a Windows machine, it's really easy. You just right click on it, and somewhere in here it will say install profile. And that's all you have to do. So Windows, it's really, really easy. With a Mac, it's a little more um, convoluted. we got to go to the hard drive. 
and we go to our library and you got to go to color sync right there then you'll see profiles and then all you do is drag it into there and you're going to have to authenticate so you're going to have to put in your password and click OK and now it's installed and it will now show up you probably have to restart Windows or re, I'm sorry restart Lightroom but it will then show up in the drop downs and again you'd have to go to other and um, look for it through there and is it's not there now as I mentioned you'd have to um, you'd have to restart uh, Lightroom which I'm not going to do right now but that's how you would do it um, to get that paper inst or that ICC profile installed so that's it I hope that all made sense um, sorry it took so long and uh, that's it for how to print in Lightroom. I appreciate everyone watching my videos, and thank you for all the questions uh, people have been sending me. Uh, a lot of people were confused about how to do this, so I hope that at least clears up a lot of it. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.